Buckets. Mm -hmm. That's the name of my boat, Buckets. 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 What we get. Not the only transfer we got from Florida. Keith Stone, too. Remember that. Everybody who watches his show on a regular basis knows my love of the stretch four. You know, we all make mistakes. He might have made one going to town. Let's see if y'all don't know. Let's see if y'all don't know. Dribble to the left, cross over to the right. Hurricane to the game, many buckets for the night. Matt with the pin to roll, Melissa with the give it a go. This shelly you, pretty girl dunking in the hole. Check the scoreboard, this what we fall for. Keep the game play, they want an encore. Yeah, over time for another round. It's buckets out the buckets, baby. You out of time. It's buckets. What it is, homie, it's buckets. Woo! We get buckets. Yeah, baby. Buckets. 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 I have no shame. I know. That's the problem. You guys are awesome. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Buckets. I'm Matty Ice. He's Vish. She's Melissa. Guys, we got a jam-packed show tonight. Melissa, we have a guest. Do what do we want to do first? Do we want to show the hoodies off? Do we want to bring Liam quickly, in here? What quickly, do we do? everyone, show your hoodies. Oh, okay. Show, show the go hoodies. Beach. Go beach. Let's go. Um, at least somebody's team made the tournament. But uh, yeah, let's get to our guest because he was early. Um, he is my colleague over at AllHurricanes.com, University of Miami student, the one, the only Liam. <laughs> what are you doing? I should have just like not let you in so she'd have to hold the pose and say a long time. time. We we should have we should have gotten Liam a hoodie. I, what was I thinking? It's all good. <laughs> Got Nate in here, Max, uh, Kane's Dolphins 89. Kane's today makes an appearance. Miss Kane's today is in here. There he is. Oh. So I I do have to say Liam first of all because we have a group text with all Hurricanes and Liam's the only one that talks basketball with me on the regular. So if I'm not in the buckets group text talking basketball, I'm usually in the all Hurricanes group text talk, talking basketball with Liam, and he also puts up with me um, trying to contain my emotions at basketball games in the media section. <laughs> hey, I know what it's like. You know, I've I've been a fan enough to know, but you know. Unfortunately, the media life taken over, so I gotta just eliminate emotion on the right. outside. It's in the inside; it's internalized, though. So don't worry. Yeah, I just feel like I'm stretching. Yeah, you know? that very, very subtly, go <laughs> like that does not work when you do it for like the tenth time. <laughs> Liam, Liam, quickly tell us, tell us, yeah, tell that's, that's the buckets be. universe about about yourself. Awesome. So I'm a writer over there, all hurricanes. Uh, do a lot of stuff covering football, basketball. Uh, baseball, we we'll work on a little bit, but we're trying to get into that. But no, basketball, love that stuff. Went to the Final Four last year, was down there on the floor as a student. It was a super fun time. Uh, this team's got my attention, obviously, with what's going on. You know, wasn't the best season, but, you know, I hear rumbling. So we'll uh, we'll see what's going to happen, though. But uh, I think it's going to be a completely different team. Oh, yeah, and we're definitely going to get into that. But before we talk basketball – you see this list behind me. We got to know if you could only have one chicken sandwich for the rest of your life, are you going to Popeye's or Chick-fil-A? You know, I've actually only ever had the Popeye's chicken sandwich once, but it wasn't, I wasn't really a fan of it. So I got to go Chick-fil-A. I got to join the majority. So the guys figured you were a Chick-fil-A person because they started looking at old tweets. Yeah. Wait, wait, hold on. What are you well, they, Matt? Matt somehow <laughs> found a tweet. Well, we're like getting five to the point ago. here. <laughs> we're getting to the point here now. Where like I feel like we gotta start questioning. Me and Vish have to question guests because we're both on the Popeyes team. Yeah. Uh, before we let them on, because we need to go start getting some uh, some guys on the Popeyes train. Because right now it's just us two and DJ Irving. First of oh. all, besides Liam, I've only brought on Quite one trio, other guest. Though. I've only brought on one other guest besides oh, no two technically. Well, someone help me bring him on, but. You guys have brought on more guests than I have, so not my fault. I've only brought the one on. Then she named the show. There we go. <laughs> We're running out of space. 
I have to erase the arrow. Well, if someone would say Popeyes, we wouldn't have this problem. But <laughs> Glad to join future top five pick Jaleel Bethea on that list. <laughs> he, like, roasted me you have a short name. too. Thank- thankfully, you have a short name. I can squeeze it in. <laughs> there we go. Oh, man. Oh. Well, look at that. Oh. And here we go. I already see it in the comments. Who are we getting? Who are we getting? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Don't we all want to know? I know. Yes. Yeah, he is going to be a guest on our uh, on our uh, OG's show coming up at some point. Oh, yes. <laughs> all right. Let's talk basketball, shall we? Yes, let's do that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We're actually going to talk about. <laughs> welcome. Welcome. It is now it's 73. Amazing. Good stuff. There we go. Uh, what... What what hoops, what hoops questions y'all got for me or where, where so, we're trying to do this? So I think I, I don't know about you guys, but let's start about who do we think is gonna stay at the mm. University of Miami? The three of us have kind of discussed this already, but it'll be good to get another perspective because I think everyone's sick of us saying the same people are saying and going. So what do you think, Liam? Who knows? Maybe I don't think stuff. Maybe I know stuff. You know, maybe it's that way. Um, Sources. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I do know there's one guy in the starting lineup is going to leave. I don't know if I can definitely say that, but there is one guy where you wouldn't be surprised who's the one that's leaving. Um, I can say though that I know that the decisions of the two of the biggest guys, Pack and Omir, are still up in the air. So uh, we're still waiting to see where that goes. That was the last time I heard that. So uh, those are still up in the air. But uh, and. No, not sure exactly on Keyshawn. Not sure about uh, anyone else, but uh, that's what I got. But I do know there's one more guy. We have at least a sixth transfer. I'd imagine there'd be more, though. I'd imagine at least gets to seven is my is my understanding of the situation. I want, who, who do you think are going to be the three the, the ones that stay then? Oh, what, we set the over-under at, what, two and a half, guys? Four. Yeah, I think. We I mean, said, I remember that tweet that Liam posted, and I said, "What's the line at?" And I can't remember. Did I say three and a half, or is is that yeah, what we said it at? It went over in a week. No, it didn't. Yeah, like- no, it went over in like twenty four hours. <laughs> in, in like twenty four hours or two days. Yeah, it was AJ Christian, and then J- Jakai and Bensley, like right after. I was like, "Yeah, oh, here we go." There's four. What are your feelings on Paul Jobe? <laughs> oh God. So, I mean, <laughs> I've had a lot of talks with people about this. At the, I, I think Coach L put it perfectly in kind of his end of the season, like, press conference. Like, people like him just have to stay. Like, look at, like, D'Lo. Like, he goes and leaves, goes to Louisville, doesn't really play a role, like, somehow starts against us randomly. Like, what was that, like a nepotism start? And then, you know, now he's back in the portal. And, like, same with, like, a bunch of other guys that, you know, that they, they haven't already graduated – they're back in the portal that were on Miami last. Uh, the favorite the area. Final four team. Yeah. Favorite area. Favorite area. He's already in the portal again. So I feel like, is the grass really greener? I don't think so. I think that's, I mean, unless it's a situation where he's a guy that Coach L doesn't think is going to be, you know, buying into the system, I think he should stay. Because I think that while Nwoku kind of was maybe surprising to many, kind of what I began to realize was, you know, there's probably a reason why he left. I think it was, you know, they talked about his, like last, the last home game of the season, he was playing his best basketball and he pulled him. And I was like, what's going on there? And, you know, someone asked it and they're like, you know, he wasn't playing press defense. Like I asked him to do it. I'm like, obviously that was not a one-time thing when he didn't do what he wanted him to do. So um, it's a whole, can they bind the system? And I think, it, yeah, it's Paul, the greatest player of all time. Not, not at all. I mean, you know, he, I, but I think he can definitely grow into, you know, by the time he's a junior, senior, being a real contributor on this bench. If he decides a good to role player, him, you know. yeah. Yeah, which is, you know, you need those guys. Like, as much as we hated on him, and, you know, I did not enjoy too much of his lowlights, uh, Anthony Walker, you know, you still need a guy like him that is, you know, has been in big games and stuff like that. You know, we don't want to take jump shots, but, you know, you still want a guy that can, you know, as a wing that can provide, you know, that veteran leadership out there, whether it be off the bench, you know, or if it's in the starting lineup, you need guys that can be around the program for a while. And, you know, who knows by the time who's running the program, by the time he's a senior, because uh, that's, you know, that'd be three years away from now. So that's my take on it. L will be pushing so, 80. 
Can I can I ask you a hypothetical, Liam? Yeah. Let's you. let's let's say Nigel and Norchad are back. You know they're back, right? Mm-hmm. Who are the portal targets you're looking for? Like it can be like not specific names, but maybe like a position. Yes. Yeah. So okay. So we're we're saying Norchad and Nigel back. Uh, mm-hmm. And then, assuming that he's too talented to come off the bench, you have Bethea in the lineup. So it would be Bethea mm-hmm. and Pac. Uh, you kind of hope that Pac continues to develop more as a playmaker. Uh, and then, yeah, so you, let's – and we'll say just for that reason, Keyshawn goes NBA, Poplar and Cleveland transfer. I think, honestly, what you're going to want to address is, you know, do you want to just do the whole system where it's, you know, another guy that can, you know – uh, you know, two more wings like the, you know, Jordan Miller, Ruga thing, or do you want to go get that big guy? It's an interesting situation because there's a lot of really talented. I know you didn't say not like names exactly, but there's a lot of really talented bigs that are in the portal mm-hmm. right now, which, you know, I think Miami's really kind of pressing to get an answer right now from Omir. And they really want an answer, you know, from Nigel because that's going to determine everything. And that's kind of what screwed him over last year. Um, but if I would say, they need to add some sort of size. Hopefully, you know, even if it doesn't, someone that's going to play alongside as Omir in the starting lineup, which, you know, I think is kind of an interesting situation. I don't really think Omir is a guy that can play the four. People go, oh, you shoot the three now. But, like, it's lateral quickness. It's this, that, and the other thing. Can you really put him there? I think – He also can't shoot the three. His percentages are <laughs> – he just shot more of them. I, I know, but people <laughs> see him ball and they think he's going to turn into – I don't know. Whatever. It's a I'm, bad shot. Him taking a three I'm, is a bad I'm shot. I'm so bro. grateful that you're saying that because the three of us have been saying this and everyone thinks you're crazy. Yeah, yeah. no. You well, can't. what I what I what I've been saying is if we're gonna put Norch at the four, we're talking about a traditional four that plays inside the three point line and like maybe as a mid range, but not like if you think he's gonna like hit a bunch of threes and stretch the floor <laughs> out, that ain't happening. Yeah, and, like and can people you really are just go confused. Back? To the 2010s, like when you had like Paul Gasol and Joakim Noah playing down well, like that's not going to work in college basketball. Like you know, unless you have a unicorn guy that's tall and can shoot and move well, then then Kenny it's Kaji. <laughs> well, that was I'm, actually more the old school stuff. Liam, he shot some three, but he played a lot in the post too. Uh, and but people I, don't really play that way anymore. Yeah, no, I think you do need to get a guy. I, I forgot his name. I, I should have written, written this down, but there's. I mean, it was one of the guys. Oh, it's uh, it's the guy who's taking the vision on the first. Who's he? The ECU. Brandon Johnson. Yeah, he's a good rebounder. If I remember that, he put up like eight a game or something like that. Like that's like the kind of guy I feel like you would want to have next to Amir that like can all can hit the glass but can also play outside. Like you don't. He's want got to- major range too. He's got like legit NBA. Yeah. Like he shoots them from deep. Like you go get the Rutgers guy, which I don't think we're gonna get if. You aren't getting Omir back. You don't get like everyone last year was like, let's go get Kalel Ware. I'm like, okay, yeah, but like, what's that going to do? Like, only one of those, either Omir or Ware, is going to shine. The other one's going to suffer playing next to each other. Because what Ware's probably got a better outside game, but you don't put a seven footer on the wing like that. Like, that, that last year's conversation was so stupid with that. I'm like, no, like, we're not getting another big man to put alongside him. But you do need a bench big unless they're going to go. Because I mean, who do they have now? They got. They got no bench big. They got no bench, really. I mean, they're no, all in the Paul, portal besides Paul Jobe. Paul, Paul, Paul <laughs> Jobe and the freshman. Night. Paul's going to come back. Yeah, and the freshman. You got Schwartz and, uh, I mean, you know, another wing. Johnson. So, yeah, Johnson's a wing. So, I mean, sure, look, talent, but like, that's a wing. So, yeah. I think the hard part is you got to get a guy to buy into being a backup, which is probably like the least desirable thing in the portal. But if it's money, then Kane's connection is well, open up. Do- to check. That's the same problem of, as last year. If Norch has back, your backup <clears throat> bigs being a backup big is not a great proposition. So people think you're gonna you're not gonna convince some guy who's been a starting center to come here and be a backup. Especially Norchad plays 35 minutes a game. Like who's coming in for like a 10 minute role here? Norchad also That's plays 35 minutes a game because he has to because we didn't have anyone else, but he also gets into foul trouble. So if you can maybe get a backup big that's maybe has a, a couple of years or two or three years, like was a freshman this year or something that's willing yeah. to come off the bench for a year and then start maybe you could, but he's not going to be as developed obviously. But if we're going, I mean, we talked about it earlier in our chat. Like if you're going after all of these bigs, we almost kind of feel like the writing's on the wall about Norchad. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's also and a lot be- of them are upperclassmen too, though. Yeah, they're like grad transfers. With like one or two years of eligibility. Yeah, I mean, because what? You can't sell a person, oh, oh, you should come be back at first, but don't worry because Norchak gets in foul trouble. Like, <laughs> that's not, 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 not a guy that has one year of eligibility. To, uh, yeah, eligibility. No, like, it's not I think, happen. Melissa, you're right. It's got to be like a freshman who's like, you know, wasn't in like a great situation. Like, like, hey, like, come get the, we'll give you the keys to the, you know, the starting center spot after the one year, like come down here and train because, you know, they're going to need it. You know, it's, we've had such a privilege in the last couple of years having a guy like Sam Wardenberg, who was so instrumental, but who else behind Sam Wardenberg did anything? Anthony Walker played center minutes, but like, that's not who you want playing center. And, you know, now we have Norchad comes in to replace him immediately. And then now we're in a situation of, you know, it's going to be we're either chasing some guy recruiting wise or we're chasing a guy in the portal that's going to have to replace him. And we can't get caught behind that. I think you got to have someone that's going to be in the wings building up for it because you can't let this cycle repeat itself because it's it's not going to always work in our favor. Yeah. Do we want to talk about some names in the portal or? Well, well, here's I want to ask a question that, real quick about yeah. about who we have left with the starting five that we have, like that are that haven't transferred or gone to the NBA draft or whatever. Um, if you could only bring two people back from that team next season, which two would you bring? Huh? Mm, it would probably just be Pac and Omir. Uh, uh, I feel like that's the easiest ones to say. I mean, as much as I just can, had the whole rant about Omir staying, kind of throws everything off. Like he's gonna be one of the be- best players in college basketball if he returns. So, because mm. uh, he, he's gonna develop a little bit, it makes more sense. Because like, what's he really gonna do? Like, he's not gonna get drafted. You know, like this is kind of how he's a four-year player. Like, overseas is really his option. Come back, get some more nil money. You know, I know he's got his complications with the international stuff, but still. And then Pat's just like, I think a veteran guard is the best thing you can have in college basketball. Like, look at R.J. Davis. Look at Caleb Love. Look at Tyler Kolick, all those guys in the tournament. A lot of those teams are led by strong senior or, you know, just older upperclassmen guards. And that's exactly what you want if you want to, you know, get back to that level. So, especially if you're pairing him with a, a true freshman at the two. Yeah. And I mean, if all things go right, Bethea is gone. So, you know, yeah, after a year. So it's going to be yeah. another year. It's, so, next year might even be a more create, even be a crazier storyline because if, Pack and Omir come back and the other starters leave, then you're going to have basically three starters leave because Omir and Pack run out of eligibility. And Bethea, something terrible is going to have to happen if he doesn't get drafted. So interesting scenario there. All right, Matt, let's, let's talk people in the portal. Let's, I, I see you chomping at the bit. Let's start the question in the chat. What do you think of Lynn Kidd? I guess we can all answer that. We'll start with Liam. Lynn Kidd? I mean, he was really inconsistent. I mean, like he put up decent averages, but like what you gotta look at is like the whole like stretch of games. Like they all became nothing when Padula was going off. And I mean, sure he's solid, but like what are the odds some guy goes from D Tech to Miami? You know, especially with they had a better season than us. I feel like he's looking to go another way, but I mean, he'd be a solid option, but I think there's better options or more attractive options in the portal, I'd say. I mean, I like uh, what's it called? Amari Williams is great. What three time defensive player of the year, Drexel. I mean, I think that's more of a guy that I want us to go after. And just a, if you want to get that big force that, you know, of course, he's not extremely talented offensively, uh, like an Omir, I mean, Omir, better offensive player, Sam Wardenberg, at least could stretch the floor. But like, I feel like that's more of an option than Lynn Kidd. I don't know. I feel like that'd just be kind of a, a weird addition. Do you think the fit next to Omir would be kind of weird too? Oh, thin kid? Yeah, I yeah. mean, does he stretch the floor? I don't think he does. No, I mean, he's pretty mobile for, like, his size, I would say, right? I think, um, He doesn't shoot the but, three at all, but, like, yeah. No, he doesn't shoot the three at all. No, I mean, he would be – he's a, he's a center, so he's not yeah. – he's not – It's it's it will be Norchad at the four if you're doing that. Yeah, he, he's not a much of a rim protector. He's never averaged more Yeah, than he's not a I mean, rim I know, protector. I know blocks isn't everything, but he doesn't even average – half a block like what's that going to be i mean i mean norchad's not even much of a run defender anyway you can't just have two big guys because if you have two big guys I mean, you, that you paint defenders like you shouldn't just have two big guys and they can't you know stop people at the rim so i don't know i don't think that would make much of a sense of the acquisition yeah 
I was just laughing at his name when we were playing Virginia Tech this year. So if he becomes a cane, I have to I have to not laugh at him anymore. I don't think we go that way. No, I think there's a lot of uh, I think playing like guys like PJ Hall and Quinton Post, like if Norchad leads, like that really kind of like this coaching staff might just be like, hey, like that's the kind of guy we want to go after, a dude that can, you know, kind of do a little bit of everything, which might be kind of hard to find. So but you never know. You got to – not everyone – not all your transfers are going to come from big schools. I mean, you know, people – Northside Pittsburgh, Arkansas State. Exactly. People are like, oh, well, this guy didn't come from, you know, Arkansas or something like that. It's like, yeah, well, look at Charlie Moore. Do get passed around uh, from different team to different team. And uh, Jordan Miller from Jordan George Miller Mason. Jordan Miller and, you know, whoever it may be. Who actually yeah. started with Tyler Kolick at George Mason. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, like, yeah, all those big, yeah, like I said, Tyler Cole, like, it's not everyone has to start off at a big time program. I mean, I don't know if you guys saw the thing with, uh, what's it called? Dan Hurley was saying something about the transfer portal. And they're like, what are you talking about? One of your best players transferred three times. Or yeah, twice. Cam Spencer. Yeah, I was like. Three. Oh, it's crazy. It's hypocritical, but you can talk when you're one of the best teams in the country. So, yeah. Um, I want to ask you about a specific. I want to ask you about a specific name in the portal. It's someone that I've fallen in love with watching his film, and mm-hmm. I don't know if you've done a breakdown on him. I saw you do a few of them on Twitter, but it's well, Michael Brown Jones. Mm, I've seen you guys talk about him. He was on my list. Michael Brown Jones. Matt's in love. Yeah, I just like the versatility he brings, like especially on offense. And I think if Norchad does stay, he's someone that you know would fit really well next to him. But have you had a chance to kind of look at him? No. So I, I mean, okay, I'm looking at his stats, and let's 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 agree, stats don't tell the story, but you can get yeah. a bit of a picture of what he is. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean that's kind of like the ECU guy. He you know puts up a lot of points. Um, you know, obviously not from a you know big time conference or anything like that, but you know can shoot the three ball. I mean, not like crazy volume, but you know still yeah. 43. percent You know can rebound two offensive rebounds a game's great. Um, you know, doesn't need – everyone's going to say, oh, we need a big four that can play the big like Jordan Miller. Okay, that's not always going to happen. We said that with Matthew Cleveland. I don't think he was even a fraction of what he was, but uh, I digress. Uh, no, yeah. I mean, based off just the numbers, I mean, I need to do a little bit more of a dive into him. Seems like the right guy. It looks like maybe he's – he didn't have a great defensive year, apparently, to his numbers. But – um no, oh, yeah, I feel like that's that's but that's like the this is the exact kind of player personnel you need, like a six eight wing who can you know bang it down low, but can also shoot from outside. Uh, you know, he's got a good shooting percentage, a 54, 43, 78 splits. Like, yeah, he's very efficient on offense. And you can't always say, oh, he played in what's the southern uh conference, yeah, who yeah, cares? southern conference, well, Stanford and. Uh, Chattanooga and Citadel. Well. They beat uh, they beat a few. They beat Arkansas, and I think they beat another team in a major conference. I can't remember who else this year. Yeah, I always like looking at how they do against like the big time competition. Like if because they, they always play like two games at least, regardless of who you are, against some like you know solid competition, and that that really tells. I mean, you know, it's how those D two guys end up going or you know going up a division. So I mean, what they played Vanderbilt. They, he's put up 24 points. Sure, say what you want about Vanderbilt. He shot 65% against them. And then, they, yeah, they beat Arkansas, shot 75% against them. I mean, yeah, no, I feel like – and Miami's contacted him, right, if I believe. I think. Yeah, that. they've – yeah, at least from what I've seen, yeah, it was reported that they have. We've no, already yeah. given him a nickname. What's your nickname for him? MBJ. Well, Let's go by the mean, initials. It's, it's, it's an it's initials. Idea. That might be one of his nicknames, I'm assuming. So <laughs> very creative Funny. there. Is is there anyone you've been looking at in the portal that you're like, uh, oh, yeah. I have to Miami? Well, no, I mean, like kind of looking, I mean, I, I evaluate some guys that like I don't even know if they're gonna go to Miami or you know, even Miami's gonna talk to them. I know Jamal Mashburn's gonna be one of the <laughs> conversation just because, you know, name value name. from Miami, everything like that. Uh I broke him down. My concerns is like Maybe I didn't know enough about New Mexico, but like he fell off like shooting percentage wise this year. I'm assuming it was because House kind of took the reins there, but like 48% true shooting is terrible for a guard. 
Uh, and like, he doesn't really do much besides, you know, score. Uh, so I thought maybe that might be a concern because if, you know, let's say you still have pack there, like what you'd have to put buffet at the three and then you have, uh, Mashburn and pack. Like that's just, no, you need a little bit of diversity in the lineup. So that's probably what Miami's thinking. They're trying inside of their coaching staff is like, Hey, like we need to know, are we getting a guy like pack back? Cause you know, you gotta be able to determine, you know, what kind of personnel you're going for, which, you know, I kind of took the broad approach saying like, let's say everyone leaves, like, you know, then you want to go after, uh, like Trey Dink, uh, Dinkins, who I saw my yeah. former colleague Luke was saying that uh, he's being recruited by Miami. He's the guy that can, you know, uh, he's got, what's it called? Secondary ball handler abilities, you know, would probably, if Pack was gone, would be forced in that primary role. But tough shot maker, uh, deep range. Uh, a couple of these guys I've looked at uh, from Oral Roberts, uh, Jalen Bedford. Dude, our 6.4 rebounds a game as like a kind of a frail wing, like which is like six in the conference, which is pretty good. But a lot of the guys I've looked at, unfortunately, aren't really great on defense. And I feel like with losing Bensley Joseph and potentially Wuga Poplar, like that's going to be a problem. So, you know, you really need to get some guys that can play some defense because, you know, we've seen it. You can put up as many points as you want, but if you can't play defense, you're going to lose. So what about uh, Peja's son? Peja? And I, I don't think that even is a chance of happening. I think that's like, <laughs> everyone wants to talk about it, but he's going to go to like, He'll go to some top program or he's he's definitely in there for the money. I mean, I don't blame him. That's what he's going to get. And he was he had good flashes this year. Uh, I mean, I would be surprised if he can go to school like a Kansas or something like that. I mean, because, you know, he showed the flashes. And when you have a name like that, the value carries. So hmm. that's the way I see it. I feel like we should ask Liam a over-under of transfers incoming. Mm. I don't know what to set the line at, though, Melissa and Vish. I'll set it, I'll set number, it. I'm just going to have four and a half. Four and a half. Ooh, under, under, under. I was going to say three and a half. Mm-hmm. I'd say it's like between three and four. My my, my mm-hmm. number in my head was three, but. Come on, Kate's got seats as six. Wow. Oh, no. I, I don't know about that. No, because they're going to add someone. They're going to do what they did with, like, you know, they got Joe Bay and Keyshawn Late. They're going to get one or maybe even two of those guys. Um, I don't think, even think they're going to try and fill up the whole scholarship thing again. I mean, you got to get, like, a lot. You have to get a lot of people to come off the bench would be the issue, which, you know, dating back to what we just said earlier, like, how many people are you going to sell on coming to play off the bench, which would be you get a guy from, like, a smaller school and say, hey, you know, come here, you know, prove yourself. Uh, and, you know, we'll see, you know, maybe we'll give you the chance to compete in the starting lineup. I mean, that's really all you can say because, you know, they're going to have to fill out this entire bench with, you know, it can't just be, you know, your two freshmen, Joe Bay, and that's it. And uh, you need to get some transfers in there. So uh, I'd say four is about reasonable. I'd say like two starters, two bench players, and then they get um, some guys in the, What's it called? Uh, freshman. But I mean, it's all depending on how this Norchad O'Meara and uh, Nigel situation goes. So. I mean, I, I see the only way we fill out all the rock because Kane's Cassis is like, oh, are we going to have empty spots again? With the portal, the way it is, a lot of teams are going to have empty spots because it's too easy now. The only way I could think you could sell a player on coming in and sitting the bench and then like you taking a risk on that player is if they have like a year of eligibility left or two years of eligibility left where you're not taking up a scholarship for a really long time because you don't want to just settle and waste a scholarship in case you want to get more freshmen coming in after that. Yeah. And I think also, what are you going to say? The like, and I think Miami is going to be really specific with who they're kind of going through this process and vetting people because I mean, kind of look how Cleveland went this year. Like, was that really what they thought they're going to get out of him? I don't think so. You know, was it, you know, the same player he was the start of the season was the end of the season. Uh, I mean, you know, we don't know what his situation is going to be uh, probably trending in the direction of leaving, but you know, they're going to be really specific because they only brought him in. They only brought one guy. It was like, Oh, they weren't doing any work. Yes, they were. They just didn't, you know, Either they got beat out by other teams, you know, they're going – I know Cam Spencer, for example, was a guy Miami was going after. But, you know, there's definitely a reason why they only brought one person in is because they didn't want to, you know, oh, we'll just throw this guy a roster spot, whatever. I think they're going to be really specific. Like six is crazy for them to bring in six transfers 
to a team with all, you know, coming from their different school. It's different with freshmen than it is with transfers. So uh, I'd say three or four, it all is going to hinge. I say by the end of next week, we should probably know. I'd say a little bit more about those, the guys returning because Miami is going to put pressure on them to give them an answer. So, yeah, we can't really afford to wait. Mm -hmm. That's what screwed us last year. So, Vish, you look like you're contemplating something. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Canes today, only three women have transferred out, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> so I saw Katie talking today, walking today. So who knows what's yeah. going on? Yeah. Sad times. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone in the All Hurricanes chat were like, "We're like, Melissa, are you okay?" And I'm just like, "Give me a few moments." <laughs> yeah, I got the heads up. They're like, "Wait, something's coming." I'm like, "Huh?" And then like two minutes later, it dropped. I'm like, "What?" I was like, "Your wow. message is what broke it to me because I saw your text when I woke up, and I immediately <laughs> checked Twitter and saw Tim Reynolds post about her retiring, and then I immediately texted Vish as he was texting me." Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. It's Next time you have to be gentler. <laughs> I just was like, oh, Meyer's retiring. And I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, didn't have much left to prove. So, you know, and at least she's staying on in a capacity, which matters, especially with the transition to whoever ends up being the new coach. But I mean, hey, I think there's a way there's a there's a way that that could be Larinaga by the end of next season. I'm not in the whole push him out thing, but I think that he might just I mean, he's old. It's gonna it's gonna happen sooner yeah. rather than later. Yeah, yeah no, it yeah. is. But I'm definitely not the let's push him out. Like, no, you don't push out the best coach in program history. You, he has the full reins, but he's uh, this year probably took two years off of his coaching, like, like time left. I'd imagine. Like, he got it was all sky high, obviously after the Final Four, but then coming into this season, you return three starters. Uh, you know. But other bench role players, and then this happens, you know, it wasn't just injuries, you know, everyone wants to say, oh, it was, it was some other stuff, you know, some personalities that, you know, didn't exactly align with the team, things like that. So we'll see. There's, there, I'd be very surprised if there's not a, a decent bounce back. We should at least be top five in the conference next year. I, I think if things go the right way, but just, you know, I'm, I'm laughing after our, our uh, off season talk last year. <laughs> so any, any thoughts, any thoughts on who you would think uh, coach L's successor would be as far as do we promote from within? Do we bring okay. back uh coach um, Caputo Caputo? Wow. I brain farted. Or do we do a national, a national search? I think I'd like to say, 80 90 percent chance it's caputo or an internal guy i really think that's the way miami goes they go they go they bring one of those one of their top assistants just to be the coach or caputo i mean honestly we want them to do a national search but you know is that really going to happen you know is do they really you know it depends because do they really see you know hey we saw all the success from the final four the elite eight the year before that you know, is this a product that we really should invest in if what's going to come down to? It? You know, that's what the university needs to realize is, you know, if we put money into the coaching search and you uh, we go out and get a top guy, you know, is that what's going to help us compete? Because that might what it need to be. But a familiar face is kind of what they've done. I mean, obviously, Larinaga wasn't that. But, you know, that might be what they end up going with. And, you know, it wouldn't shock me at, at all i'd say like yeah 85 percent chance it's internal hire unless things change drastically before then what do you think his timeline is you think another couple years a year two years max yeah it it just like doesn't make sense like what like he's a hall of fame level coach like he's got nothing else to prove you know he this year especially i think he's really wants to say because He's got the most talented freshman he's ever had since Lonnie Walker. You know, he wants to be able to see what the Fay has done. I mean, he's put on for, you know, the, all these circuits and everything like that, you know, rightfully so up in the conversations for a top five draft pick. I mean, it's an exciting reason to want to stay and be around. And, you know, I think Katie's retirement might even have, you know, been like, wow, like, you know, 
I've been working alongside her for a while now. You know, maybe that kind of, you know, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Someone's talked to him and asked him about that, you know, what his thoughts are on it and how it's maybe affecting his outlook. But um, I would not be shocked to see it be at the end of next year. Uh, but I think in two years, I would be shocked if he continues for a third season after that. That's reasonable. Yeah. I mean, what, he's pushing 80 at that point, right? So. Some yeah, point. 75 now, <clears throat> 70, 76, something like that. I, I mean, he looks great. About, it's about time for him to run for president, I guess. Um, to uh, <laughs> Larry Nagel Meyer, Larry he's getting, Nagel in, Meyer. getting into that age range where you know he's just getting old enough finally where he can that needs to be a hoodie. <clears throat> Larry Nagel Meyer, 24. <laughs> he's 74, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. So, I mean, he's, he's, it's, 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 he's near the end, one way or the other. Um, so I, I know you have to go, Liam. So one last question. I asked this of Matt the other day, and then uh, Melissa cut me off and ruined it, but I'm going to ask it of you. So just just up, down, answer. Do you think the Canes make the tournament next year? <laughs> His reaction is the same. He's malfunctioning. <laughs> Look what you did to him, bitch. And this is why Mitch <clears throat> got mad at me for how I reacted to that question. Well, you were, I literally said don't talk. Let's just let Matt answer it. And, of course, that didn't go over. Because it's all uh, uh, as it stands today. Question. As it stands today, no. Okay. I think See, we, it, was a, it was a thought-provoking question. We go above 500, but no. I don't think uh, from what the roster is right now and how it's going to be, I think in a week, no. No, I think there's. It's going to be a lot of unfamiliarity in the building with a lot of new faces, uh, and you know, obviously, familiar faces might not have, you know been you know helped us out last this past, season, this past season but i say there's so many work moving parts that now i think it might just be the jaleel bethea showcase next year so i'd say no yeah i don't think kane's cat heat enjoyed your answer <laughs> i have to be optimistic i was correct on my football prediction i was low everyone was saying nine wins last year i said seven and five so so did i, I actually yeah. so uh, let's ask let's bring liam on at, right before the season starts after we filled out our roster and then he can answer see what that he says then yeah, yeah i think that's a good idea we'll, we'll yeah, have yeah. to get we'll have to get you back on the show right before the season maybe when we do our season preview we'll get you on and you can give yeah. your prediction then when we have like an actual roster and can make a real a real analysis oh yeah no because right now it's like what we got four players on the team yeah well <laughs> we're gonna lose four or five so yeah so Liam, thanks for, for coming on. Um, I've been saying for weeks and months that we needed to get you on the show. I'm honored that you've joined the Chick-fil-A team. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we'll, we'll probably chat soon in the all hurricane chat, but we're definitely get you on before the season uh, starts for sure. Sounds good. Yep. I appreciate Thank you guys you. for having me again. Wait, before you go, why don't you, why don't you plug all your stuff again? I know you're on yeah. the all hurricanes. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Follow, me, follow me at the lefty Liam. Going to be doing a lot of breakdowns on transfers that Miami should target or Miami is targeting them. I'll give you my thoughts on them. Uh, break them down as much as I can. And honestly, when the transfers come in, I'll be breaking those down even more. So follow along my journey. Uh, see what's going on next. Just follow me on X, Twitter, whatever you call it, at the lefty Liam. And yeah. There you go. Cool. Thanks so much, Liam. Um, and uh, we'll be discussing more basketball very, very soon. Have a good night, okay? Yep. Thanks, Liam. Liam. All right. Seven. All right. Look, you need cool. to freaking chill, dude. You're going off <laughs> right chat, now. Dude, it's it's whole chat. The whole <laughs> chat is just him. Dude, it's a, it, it is. I mean... I appreciate the passion. I'll leave it there. I appreciate the passion. He cares, and that is more than you can say for some. People. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to give him like a whole little segment when we have our OG Canes on, just so he he can vent to the to the room. <laughs> it's usually not. I mean, he just oscillates between like stupid optimistic and stupid pessimistic, and you know, bounces <laughs> exactly. off. I love the passion. I love the passion, man. <laughs> How can you fault that? You can. Man, man, the man cares. Like, uh, and he roots for three teams that I root for. So, I mean, I'm a Canes fan, a Panthers fan, and a Heat fan. So, oh, man. which which one of the three of us is getting arrested? Is that you, Matt? Oh no, it's the the fire department next to my house. Sorry. Sure, fire department. No one's buying I, that. If you got to run I, for I, it, go, man. 
I feel like if Matt and Liam just did a show that they would take up like four hours because they would just go back and forth breaking down people's games. Probably. Yeah. To be honest. Because like Liam was like talking about baseball. <laughs> Liam, baseball is confusing. <laughs> Like, because he was talking, I could tell he was talking uh -oh. about like certain players, and Matt was like, "Yep, yep, yep, yep," and he was like busting to want to say something. <laughs> yeah. Kate, now Liam's in the chat. Kane's cat. He, you, you, you <laughs> sowed the wind. You're gonna reap the world wind now. <laughs> no, but for real, we're gonna have Liam. Liam. We will yeah, have Liam no. back on the show right before the season starts when we yeah. have an actual team and he can give a better prediction. This is why I don't like the show because you're that, not the show that question because you're starting fights that don't need to be started. It's not a fight. <laughs> it was the question that made him think the most and come up with the thoughtful answer. It was an excellent question. Oh, it was an Kane's excellent question. Is, is angry about baseball. <laughs> and, uh, we did, and we we did Kane's on deck yesterday. Like, get in the time machine and go back and watch. Vish, um, should I throw should I throw you under the bus about something you said earlier about baseball, or should I not? I don't even know what I'm talking about. Remember when I asked about? when I asked about a play, and you were like, "Oh, I don't know," because yeah, no, I I don't, I'll say it right now, I didn't watch the F FIU game yesterday. I mean, I was like, doing a show during part of it, like what? Vish, Vish, <laughs> I I so. I, I tend to in, I tend to rewatch games that we win if I haven't been able to watch them. So I watched the baseball game earlier this afternoon and I was confused by the whole appealing of the tagging up and then Urso scored. And so I asked Vish about it and he's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I didn't watch. Strong work, Nate. Very, very strong work. Nate is currently at the Chick-fil-A drive-thru. I love it. You'll be there for about two hours if the line is like it always is, so enjoy. I don't know. The Chick-fil-A by my mom's house, even with long lines, we get our food like very quickly. They run that place so well. Nate, put your order in the chat. Let us know what you're getting. Whatever it is, it lacks flavor. All right. Um... Real quick, real quick, again, go beach. <clears throat> These amazing hoodies that the store Beach. thought we were committing fraud. The, it'll be the last so time. I, I, I'm being I'm being a, a team player. This is the last time this hoodie will be worn. I don't rep other schools. I bought it for you. I know, and and you wore the hoodie I bought you once, and it's just turned back around. <laughs> At least this fits better. <laughs> I don't rep other schools. Damn it! Okay. I'm doing this because of on, dude. You gotta admit though, this is like pretty sick. It it's it's so comfortable too. It's like champion. It's like fit. what the hell kind of sponsorships does your school have? Well, at least they made the tournament. Miami. Wait, hold on. No, Miami stuff. has champion stuff too. At they the do. bookstore. Are you go, serious? Go, I'm literally go, wearing go, a pair of champion Miami I actually, Hurricane shirts. I actually have a, a Miami that. shirt that's champion. Do you want me to go get it? No, I don't. I want you to actually do the show that we're currently. I got doing. it from All Canes. Long Beach is uh, sponsored by Nike, actually, too. So they're a Nike. School. Oh, even worse. Defective bats. Never forget. Is, but it's actually a really nice hoodie. And it's embroidered too, by the way. Um yeah. tonight's snack of champions. There you go. Break out the Reese's. Oh. Can never just eat one. Can well, can, can, we, many. can we really quick just mention the transfers from the women's uh side that broke my heart this week? Well, we should talk, we should do a little women's talk here because it wasn't just the transfers. Um so yeah, so I'll run through them, let's get some thoughts, and then there were some coaching rumors that were taken care of today. Yeah, but we'll talk through that a little bit. But first, let's start. So I guess last, by last week, Allie had already entered into the portal, so we knew that one. Um, over the weekend, it was Kyla and Julia. Thoughts? Um, <laughs> it's sad. There, I, I mean, I was expecting some transfers because we had a lot of talent on this team. Um, and they're both starting caliber players who were playing off the bench by the end of the season. Um, Julia, I'm going to miss her energy, man. That girl goes a million miles an hour. Um, a defensive nightmare for people. Like, she plays, like, her defense is so good. And then, like, Kyla, I feel like she was getting better as the season went on. I'm I'm still going to look out for her because I still want to see if she's uh, holding that ball up like she's supposed to and not bringing it down. But, um. I love when she sets picks and people just bounce off of her. I mean, we have so many bigs. We kind of knew someone was going to transfer at least one yeah. of them. So, but, that, and, and actually kind of the same thing. Cause, cause once um, Cheyenne started, you know, playing the point, mm -hmm. you know, Jalea was coming off the bench the back half of the year too. Um, and, and so was Lachey. They kind of 
similar skill profile. So we kind of figured one of them might go. And obviously, Coach Coach Meyer leaving <laughs> accelerated everything, but <clears throat> there was no way this team was coming back intact anyway because there were too many starter caliber players that were coming off mm -hmm. the bench. So I don't know how much you know Coach Meyer leaving impacts everyone. Can we bring Obviously, up some impact. Can we bring up Nate's last comment really quickly? What about I'm talking oh, about yeah. women's basketball? They they do play in a pyramid, played in it. Uh, I was in a basketball class at Cal State Long Beach and we got to play in the pyramid. Amazing experience. But okay, back okay. to women. Um, Go ahead. Yeah. Can I talk? Can we talk about the Miami basketball program now? Are we are we done? No, uh, I guess. <laughs> I mean, you're wearing a Long Beach hoodie. I don't know what you're talking about. At gunpoint. <laughs> um, but no, like J Jalea and Kyla were obviously big time players for us. I know they weren't starting at the end of the year, but we had so much great depth. So like, yeah, we have we have La we have Latasha and we have Z. Um. And we went to that two big lineup towards the end of the year and th them two were starting and Kyla was coming off the bench, but we had a feeling one of them would leave, but it's still sad because like covering the team, you kind of get even more involved and more connected. So it sucks. Plus I'm going to admit, I'm going to miss Amari Stoudemire. <sighs> but I don't want Z to leave because she's my favorite player. So hopefully that means she's staying. <laughs> Well, when so, we went to uh, – wow, look, Kane's got heat knocking it out of the park. We've had this conversation in the Buckets chat. Um, the, uh, yeah, no, I mean, I think between the three bigs, like at least one of them was going to leave regardless of whether Coach Meyer is back or not, and Kyla was the one that got benched. So mm -hmm. that, that yeah. was probably, probably happening anyway, and certainly I think Jaleer Lachey was probably – going to transfer because they're both going to be seniors yeah jasmine's post for julia when she announced her transfer was so sweet because they're like besties i was like oh. but yeah it's yeah, Ju julia pour one out for popeyes um and also remember we've got three guards coming in in our freshman class next year yep one that we one had, on the, we show, had on the show yeah leah Harmon. Yeah. go back and watch team chick-fil-a all right, so on the coaching front, there were rumors. Um, USF's coach. USF's coach, Jose Fernandez, was there was mutual interest. He just announced he was staying staying, staying at um, uh, USF. So, yeah. What are your thoughts on that, Melissa? Um, I'm fine with that. Um, there's uh, some other names that have been throwing around. Nothing – um, the Jackson State coach, his name has been thrown around. Um, so I'll, I'll say this about Jose Fernandez. Did not want. <laughs> um, I, I was trying to be respectful. No, I don't know. I don't care. He's not here. Um, and and the, the reason for no, no no personal knock against him, just when you look at what we're trying to, to attract here, I could see going down to a smaller school in a smaller conference again, like a young and up and coming coach. Um, I, I could see obviously going and pulling a coach out of a P5 school that's more established. I don't understand going to USF and getting a coach that's been there 25 years. <laughs> to me, like, what was the plan there if that was the plan? I, I'm not even sure we were really interested. He probably used us for a, for a raise and a contract extension. But, um, you know, to me, that doesn't. If we're looking at, you know, what we're looking for, to me, it's either, you know, young up and coming coach for a small from a smaller school or an established coach. An established coach at a smaller school makes no sense. I mean, is there twenty five years? Who's that good? Someone better would have hired him. So, what do you think of the Jackson State coach? I'm not going to pretend like I know much about her. Okay. Although we we did beat them, so we got that going. Yeah. Nice. I mean, that's a name I've heard thrown around. Somebody mentioned to me the, one of the assistants at Mississippi State. Lazo. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. I know. I know. Um, Mississippi State's like coach used to be at Louisville um, before he was at Mississippi State, and Coach Meyer and him are pretty close, mm -hmm. so there could be some pull on that. Um, <laughs> Don't know about. I mean, he's the interim coach now. Don't know about uh, if if Coach Fitz is is going to get a shot there. 
I will yeah, say if we're gonna hire consideration, if, so yeah. If if we're if we're gonna hire an assistant coach though, I I'd be pretty annoyed if it's not him. Yeah, if, if you're, you're gonna, gonna go, go get, get an assistant, yeah, yeah, from that doesn't have head coaching experience from another power school, why not just keep the one you already have in house that has an a, a, an established relationship with most of your with your players and their recruits? Right. So, so yeah, that's what that's what I'd say on. Yeah, still a lot more to come. Again, like the the I mean the tournaments in the second. I, I know people, you know, get we gotta do something now, we gotta do something now. Like it's still March Madness. Yeah, the coaches that are available. Moose is on the higher Candace Parker train. It's been DMing me. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's a shiver coach before. It doesn't matter. <laughs> One of those higher camera James. Tamara Jane. She does commentate on the game so much. I enjoy her commentary. Also, on the sideline. She is, it's, she always is up nice to, it's always nice to have pro Miami commentary. Like I mean, I'm about to say she's up there with Jack and I'm just openly cheering for the exactly. we gotta hit that jumper. I mean, I mean the, I the hurricane's gotta it. hit that jumper. <laughs> she is right up there with Jack. I'm just openly cheering for Miami during those games. So mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it still doesn't matter. Um but yeah, no, it's it's probably still going to draw out for quite some time because again, the coaches that are more available now are the less good ones. To be honest, like I mean, that's what we're talking about, yeah. right? Like so, you know, you want to wait for more of the teams to get eliminated to interview some of your top candidates. I can't imagine Miami does as not, you know, they must have some candidates that are still coaching in the tournament. So. If yeah. you're going to thoroughly do a coaching search, you do need to wait for them to be available. So, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, I don't understand why that's a thing, why everyone thinks we need to have a female coach. Like, that makes absolutely no sense to me. Like, get the best out there. Someone else said that on Twitter, and I, I'm like, I why does it have to be female? Some of the best women's coaches are men too. Yeah, I don't think it has to be, um, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't think it matters one way or another. <clears throat> yeah, and they, this is more of the like, if they really wanted to move on, they would have, and you know, if you're at the end of your your career there, then. Uh, Octavia Blues being mentioned. Yeah, no, I think we're all on the same page here. Yeah. <laughs> Moose, you can DM Melissa and tell her that it matters. It doesn't matter if they have coaching I'm, experience. But no, it Moose, well, I'm curious. So why, <laughs> why, why, why does it matter? Like, what, what's, what's your thought process behind it, though? Maybe there's something I'm missing. <clears throat> I'm, 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 I am curious why a few people have said that. Why it has to? Why does it have to be a female? So, just curious. Matt, what do you think? Do you think it has to be a female? No. You expect me to get more into it? <laughs> no, just trying to get you involved in the women's team. Somebody on no. Twitter asked me if, if I was going to apply for the job. I mean, it was a joke, but it was funny. <clears throat> I was like, yeah, no, I no, I no, no. I don't know enough about basketball. To I was about to say, no, no offense, you're not qualified. <laughs> no, I mean, it was a joke, but I know, I know. I was like, I'm a fan. I'm not a coach. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I mean, the best... is, is is one I yeah. hadn't thought of that is definitely interesting in terms of ties to the school. I was assistant here for a long time under Katie, head mm -hmm. coach at Kennesaw State now. Interesting. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. but I, I to throw out there. Too many male coaches of women's basketball. I, I don't. I have no idea. I, I have no idea what the numbers somebody. are. I I don't want to hire somebody just because they're female. I want to hire the best option out there. If they happen Dude. to be female, great. <clears throat> if they happen to be male, that's fine too. I don't. I don't think we should limit our search based off of gender. But, I don't. I don't think we are. Um, no. I. But I mean. But Moose isn't the only one who said like, oh, it should be a female. 
I mean, would that be great? Yeah, of course. Like the more women in, in these top positions, the better. But I'm not I'm not going to be like, oh, it has to be this because then it limits your your the opportunity to find the best person. So. <clears throat> I mean, let, let, let's, I mean, let's just say it. It's to fill Coach Meyer's shoes is impossible. It's impossible what she's done for the program. So whoever comes in is going to have really big shoes to fill, and we just need to be supportive and 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 see what happens. Yeah, no, this is, again, this is a good good shout yeah. of a name I hadn't really thought about, but yeah. It's also a really cool name, Octavia Blue. That's a great name. Yeah, a name Hall of Fame there. But yeah, no, she was an assistant for like 10 years. No, but it really is <clears throat> name worthy. Like that's like Frankie Fiddler level, like awesome name. Frankie Fiddler is the most overrated name in sports. <laughs> that's all I, I say. Me and Matt disagree with you. You're just a hater. Yeah. I, I do the naming of things around here, and I am definitely right on this one. I mean, that's what Coach Coach Meyer said. We're going to mm -hmm. win a national championship here, so let's see what happens. <clears throat> and you know what? But but these donors and where the program <clears throat> is right now is because of Coach Meyer. So we're coach, I'm sure in a way Coach is helping with this process, but she's built this program up, and someone who comes in is going to reap the benefits of what she's been able to do for this program, and hopefully we do win a natty. And that's why I'm like, don't limit your search to just a female look for the best option because there's a lot of positive and the, the team's trending up. So coach Meyer has done more than you can measure for, for, for this program. Like he's freaking goat and her name better be on the court. More than later. Is there a plane landing at Matt's house now? No. <laughs> Man, you complained about LAX. I just pick you he's, up. Right listen, front door, he's huh? trying to make sure no more birds die during the. Recording. No, I need to have the window open because I'm wearing the hoodie. It's it's <laughs> gonna get hot if I. Yeah, if I don't have. Yeah, Melissa, you make us all put hoodies on. It's hot in here. It was his birthday present. Still he hot. appreciates the hoodie. I do appreciate the hoodie. We don't want the Matt coolest hoodies I've ever owned. It's one of my nicest non-Miami hoodies I've ever owned. There you go. So. Hmm. Um, any other things? Come on, don't be involved in this. <clears throat> I, I think I think she she's going to be involved for sure. I think she's going to be involved in the program moving forward. That's why they created a position for her. Yeah. Well, she kind she's, of created it for herself. And, and like. If when you watched her like retirement press conference and the way she talked about the program and stuff, you you could tell there was a little bit of like a little bit of confliction because like you obviously know she loves the team, but she knew it was time to like step away from coaching. But uh, it hurt her because of how much she loves the team. So she's gonna be around, but it is what it is. Yeah, I mean we we talked about this a little bit. This is a good transition topic. Um, um, in terms of, yeah, so, I mean, if there's nothing else, on the, I think we pretty much covered the women that we need. Yeah. For now. I mean, another thing to keep in mind, though, is, like, you know, once we get in the coach in place, we're going to go back in the portal and look for more players on the women's side, too, so. <laughs> also, really quickly, before, before we move on to our, our trash more tonight, um, can we just address why they named Coach Fitch the interim coach? And why it's important that there's still somebody r running this program while they look for a new coach? Do, do do we really need to address that? Because someone on Twitter said, "What does an interim coach do anyway?" Like, I don't think so. Because it's annoying. <laughs> I, I don't honestly. If we if we every idiot that replies on Twitter, like if we, if we and I shouldn't call him an idiot. Everyone that replies on it's, Twitter, like we can't refute. Every I, I will just say. Show. It's it's not disingenuous. It's not a bad move by the program to name someone the interim coach after somebody retires while they look for a replacement. <clears throat> there are things that coaches do in the off season, including off the you know end of season evals, recruiting, making talking to our recruits that are incoming, you know, helping players that are entering the portal, things like that. There's important things. The the, the administration is not being like assholes by naming somebody an interim coach. This is how it works. Okay, he went ahead today. Have, have you gone back and forth? With, what's your Twitter name? I don't. Have, I go back and forth with a lot of people. If I've insulted you, I'm sorry now, but I probably wasn't sorry. Sorry then. 
<laughs> anyway, I mean, she insults me, so it's fine. Welcome to the club. All right, so real quick before we pivot to the Mount Trash, Matt, I know you had some. Are there any other names that we we talked about? Lynn Kid with Liam, but are there any other names you wanted to talk about out of the portal that we hadn't talked about? Oh man, um, there's a few. I'm trying to remember exactly which ones we talked about. Vish, I know. Um, let me think. I wrote some of them down. So I know. Oh, Tony Perkins from Iowa was one. I don't think he's going to come here, though, because I saw something that a, a bunch of other schools um, have kind of had a lot of contact with him. Um, he's a point guard from Iowa. Uh, Cade Tyson, a wing from Belmont, um, kind of like a catch and shoot guy. Um, really good in like dribble handoffs and stuff, which a lot of our offenses, those dribble handoffs, um, really good with the ball as well. I, I just haven't looked at these guys too much. Um, and then there's a guy from Mount St. Mary's who's originally from Fort Lauderdale, uh, M Montgomery. I can't remember what his first name is. Um, he's another guard, really good in transition, more of like a slasher, um, little turnover prone, if I remember. Um, he's someone they recently reached out to. It was either today or yesterday. Um, there was one more. Oh, it was a guy from Furman, another guard. He's kind of undersized as well, 6'1". Um, another slasher can sh can uh, can shoot as well. Really good with ball screens. I noticed that like a lot of these guys that were looking at the smaller guards are really good ball screens. It makes sense. I think that's something that was missing from our offense. Um, and he's a really good uh, playmaker as well, 27% assist rate. Um, so those are some of the other guys that we've reached out to. I just I have to watch more film on them. It's just really brief stuff that I saw last night uh, before I went to bed. <laughs> Maybe next week we'll have some more breakdowns. Yeah. I want to start posting things because I've started to take a lot of notes down and whatnot. So Good. I'll probably start posting some breakdowns from the buckets account with like film and stuff. So make sure you guys are following buckets at buckets underscore canes. Yep. But all right. But yeah. Trash more. Matt has to get out of here in 25 minutes. I have a little bit more time. I got like, like 25, 35. So. Okay. Is there anyone else you wanted to talk about? No, I think that's, I think that's everyone. I can't remember, dude, we've been in contact with so many more people now. So um, yeah. I think that's everyone. I do think though, overall, if you kind of look, look at, yeah, Darius Kane. It's actually scrolling across the bottom. So you follow us at Buckets Kane's. Yeah. And um, it's up that's, here too. That's, that's the handle. Um, I do think we are. I mean, I know it's still up in the air. The way I, I know Liam has opinion on Lynn Kid. Um, I mean, it's not. We're not breaking news that he's been crystal balled to the Canes by a few people. Sites. Um, sites. Yeah. Um, but I mean, he's not the only guy that we're targeting in the portal, or that you know. I said we've expressed interest as pretty clearly a starting center. So I think we are kind of preparing for the eventuality. Just look at the strategy. And, and he's a grad transfer, so he's got one year <laughs> left. Well, looking strategy-wise, it does look like we're looking for a starting center, which kind of tea leaves they're not confident, at least not confident in Norchad. Um, and then looking for um looking looking for um it does look like we're looking for guards that can play next to Nigel. If you look at the the pro, we're not targeting a lot of like pure point guards. Um, it's been a lot more of combo guards, guards that you know a little bit taller yeah. that might be able to play next to Nigel. So if I'm reading, just probably reading way too much into this, it does feel. I see your follow, and I will follow you back, my friend. Anyway, as I'm trying to talk hoops over here, um, <laughs> um, for the audio people, there's an audio <laughs> podcast. Melissa held her phone up to the screen <laughs> inexplicably. To to show them. Yes, and you could have, you know, eaten the chat, which you've already been chatting into, <laughs> or a million other ways rather than interrupting my basketball analysis here. But I love to interrupt you. I know. That's the problem. Throw back to the intro. Um, I have so no that's true as well. Um, but it does feel like we are kind of at least thinking Norchad might be gone because we're, we're definitely looking at starting, starting centers. Um, but it doesn't look like we're really looking at starting point guards, at least from what I've seen. Which yeah, no, I see it. 
Yeah. Um, no, I, I think definitely, um, you know, it's guys that can play next to Nigel, a couple of them coming off the bench, guys that can kind of, you know, Still be in the rotation this year and play more next year. Yeah, no, it does feel like they think Nigel's going to be back, but maybe not Norchad, just looking at the targets. Yeah. Yeah. So, Kane's guy, real quick, and then we'll do Mount Crash more. The, the, um, there's the women's tournaments, the, the second tournament's not the NIT, it's the WBIT. Um, and the top seed in that is the last team left out of the NCAA tournament, which is us. So they announced us as the one seed without asking. Yeah, um, and then, then they quickly deleted the tweet. Well, they didn't know that not only did they announce us as the one seed, they tweeted it out. They did the whole bracket. They had a bracket show mm -hmm. talking about like the number one overall seed is Miami. Stony Brook is going to Coral Gables. And then someone up for our lead department, I'm sure, reached out and was like, uh, we're not playing in your bullshit tournament. And then they uh, immediately deleted the tweet, deleted the bracket, announced Canisius, who was not in the tournament. No, no, James Madison. All. James, James Madison. Madison. That's right. What was Canisius? That was the. the That's the, the name card. that Matt can't pronounce. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, announced James Madison, who's not in the tournament, as the number one overall seed. They yeah. promptly went and lost their first game, by the way, because they weren't even really good enough to make the tournament. So. Exactly. But fun yeah, times. We, times. We, we declined it. And. <laughs> Obviously, I mean, actually, no, we didn't talk about this before, but I wonder if a reason why we declined it. Well, we talked about possible reasons, but also the impending Coach Meyer retirement. I, I don't, I don't think that um, they that factored into it. Um, yeah. I mean, we a, we selfishly wanted them to play in it because that was another home game for us that we could have gone to see. But well, it wouldn't have been one home game, and I think that's part of the problem. Almost, it's a yeah. lot of money. Like you have to get the whole event staff in there. You're not gonna make you're gonna lose a ton of money on that. And we were probably gonna end up hosting three games. So it's just been a huge drain on resources and money. And I mean it's C A N I S U I S I U S. We played them in baseball a few years. We played them in baseball a few years ago. Ask Trey Dinkins, who speaking of the dirt bags, we played them as well. Um Yeah, my friend was on that team. Yeah, knocked her ass out, didn't we? Didn't we? Caught that L. You came to Coral Gables and left with an L. I guess. I don't really care about baseball, so well, sure. You still lost. That's all that matters. Um, I care that we got steamrolled by Miami's football team back in the day, and we we basically just canceled our program. <laughs> That's a lot of teams. All right, Mount Trashmore. So yeah. tonight's Mount Trashmore is – our worst, what we think are the worst mascots in college uh, sports, basically. Our top four least liked mascots. Who's going okay. first? I can start. I'm going to I'm gonna go with um, Ohio State because their mascot is a freaking nut. Like, who, whose mascot's a nut? Like, why? I mean, you... that's not the, the mascot is Brutus, like the car. Like, the, there's never been a nickname and a mascot. But right? he's a nut. He's literally a nut. But, but I don't care like, what the he, name he's is. He's got a face and stuff. It's it's a nut. They literally, it's like they're, it's like they're state nut or something. Yeah, I, I don't Buckeye. know. But I, I like inanimate objects as mascots is really weird. And I hate Ohio State. So there you go. Matt, do you want to go next? Yeah, I'll go first. This one just creeps me out, like the face and everything. And that's Purdue's like Boilermaker dude. Oh, that's like it's super creepy looking. I never want to see that again. Um, yeah, I, I I hope they lose in the tournament just so I don't have to see it anymore. Um, but yeah, I would definitely go with that dude. All right. My... Uh... My first one is Chief Osceola, the Florida State mascot. What in the name of racism is – do they have someone dressed up as a Native American riding a horse with a spear? And, like, what, what is happening? That's not acceptable in 2024. What are we doing here? How is that just a thing that everyone's just like, yeah, it makes sense. We should totally do this. This is a good idea, everyone. It's like the last relic of that because, like, <clears throat> St. John's and Syracuse used to be called like the, the Red Men and the Orange Men. They all changed their names. And, like, 
the Indians are the Guardians now, and then here's Florida State still dressing the dude up and sending him out there like it's no big deal. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. If you think about it, it's nuts. Um, my next one is Stanford because their mascot is a Damn tree. it. Took my I mom. had that on my list too. That, it's is, the that might be the winner. One. Why is it a giant it's, tree? It's a fucking tree. All right, I'm making like, a change that I'm not repeating. What? What the hell? Not to mention too, like, so I've been to a Stanford football game. Their band is the most weird. It's like the most weird experience I've ever seen. They all just like run around with like crazy props and like wasn't and that the, the band trees that out, out there? The probably, but yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. I mean, probably. You don't know that play. And before you say you're younger, it was like before all of our times. It was when John Elway was in college, but it's like one of the I don't know. I was just I was just going past that thought because I wanted to talk more about the Stanford band and whatever. But one of this the This is about mascots. the Stanford band. Okay, well, I was trying to Oh my god, whatever. Okay. Go ahead, Fuck man. the Go Stanford ahead. tree. No, I have nothing to say now. That's it. <laughs> Stanford tree. Fuck you, Stanford tree. <laughs> you can say fuck you to me too. I know you're thinking it. <laughs> It's also your turn, by the way. Puck sign is appropriate. My turn? Yeah. I said Stanford yeah. Tree. Oh, so I'm right. oh, oh, oh I'm, I'm coming no repeats. So I got to come up with something oh, else. Oh, my God. No, you okay. can. Yeah, you can. You, you, can. Okay. you, you, you can. You can repeat if you want. I'm saying I'm going no repeat. Okay, fine. I'll go no re- I'll go the Xavier. I already wrote it down, though. No, I'm, I'm already. I'm, cross no, it out, then. I'm, yeah, cross <laughs> it out, then, apparently. Uh, Xavier the Blue Blobs. I didn't oh, even know damn that it. Was that thing. was on my list. Yeah. How's it feel? How's it feel? <laughs> I'm glad I said this one because you would have stole my next my next one then too. Um, yeah, no, it just, it looks like a little kid drew it and just a blue blob <laughs> of shit. It looks like a little kid drew it. Yeah. I don't know. It looks it's terrible. A blue blob. It's like a three-year-old got a crayon and with a blue crayon and just went like this. Yeah. That one's awful. Okay, so my next one is actually kind of similar to Matt's first one. The Wake Forest Demon Deacon. I was going to say that one, too. What the hell is that thing? Like, I don't even... First of all, I don't... Demon Deacon's an oxymoron, so I don't even know what's happening there. But it's like it's like the Purdue mascot, but, like, Pluffy instead of, like, a hard head. <laughs> but other than that, very similar. Um, yeah. So I don't, I don't know what Demon Deacon is. I don't know what that mascot is for. Hard pass for me. And Wake Forest isn't even in Wake Forest. What do you mean? Their campus isn't in Wake Forest. Wake Forest isn't a place. It's Winston-Salem is the city. Wake Forest isn't a... I thought it was an actual city also. Wasn't it an actual city at one point? No? No. The so wake is... Like... wrong information. There might be a Wake Forest, but it's not That's what I'm city. saying, yeah. Cause well, because like... there's a Wake County, <laughs> which is not... Didn't they, like, move campuses or something? I don't know. The whole thing is funded by the RJ Reynolds Corporation, and they're all cigarette based. All right, your turn. <laughs> um, my next one is the Virginia Tech Hokie. The turkey. Why is there you your go. mascot is a castrated turkey? I actually looked up the story for this because coming back from North Carolina or going to North Carolina, I was actually talking about mascots on the plane, and the lady behind me was wearing a Virginia Tech shirt, and so we started talking about the Hokie. But it's a castrated turkey. And it's just really weird. I, I don't think it actually is because I think I debunked I literally this Googled it. And hold on. Oh, I freaking X'd it out already. I Googled it and I said a hokey is, an actu- is actually a castrated turkey. Um, Hold on. I don't think the castrated part, I think it's something that we've made up to make fun of them. No, it, I literally found it on. I mean, I, <clears throat> the internet can lie, but. It's the so first of all, hokey. Okay, I'm I'm reading it straight off the website. It's part of their old cheer. Mm-hmm. Um, the bird yeah, is I a hokey bird. The definition and it said castrated turkey. Yeah, but from who? That's what I'm saying. It's not actually. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Melissa said it, so she's right. It's over. That that is a tall tale. Um, a hokey like they used to be called the gobblers, and they changed the name. <laughs> The Hokies from their fight song, but they kept the turkey mascot. That is where the turkey comes from. Oh, there's anything about castration. <clears throat> it's what I found on a different website. So, but also, who wants their mascot to be a fucking turkey? Oh, no, that's totally valid. Just the castrated part of the turkey. I don't think 
they're intentionally saying, I think that's something that rival schools, including us, have made up to make fun of them. I don't believe that they actually are like, yes, the castrated turkey is what our mascot's going to be. There's no balls on it anyway. <clears throat> like, it's so... <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> okay, I, I'll give you that one. <laughs> there are no balls there. <laughs> also, by the way, I just want to call out this website, collegespot.com. Y'all are a bunch of a-holes because you literally had Sebastian the Ibis as one of your top 10 worst mascots. And that is just blasphemous. Anyway, continue. Matthew? It's my turn again? Yep. Yeah, she went with the not castrated turkey. Okay. Um, the ball list, not castrated turkey. I'm going to go with whatever the, I don't even know what it is, the fucking Syracuse mascot. Damn it! Part, Matt! Part, <laughs> That's part, of this, part of this is because of my hatred of Jim, Jim Beheim. Who, by the way, caught, caught, a, caught, caught a stray earlier in the chat. I don't know if you saw it. Yeah. I mean, he deserves it. Um but yeah, no, that's what I'm gonna go with. Okay, so my, that out. <laughs> my third one, the Oregon Duck. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Because anytime anyone sees our mascot, they're like, why is your mascot a duck? And then they're like, see the Oregon duck, that's a duck. Yours looks like that. Why is yours a duck? And not a duck. Neither of them look like a duck. You're talking about the cartoon character Donald Duck that they look like, which is not what a duck even looks like. And it pisses me off. And they're like, see, Oregon got it right with a duck because their duck looks like a duck. No, they don't. They look like a Disney duck. What does an actual duck look like? It's got a thin beak. It's small head. It's not a big thing with a huge beak. That's just how they do Donald Duck. People are idiots. Sebastian will right. kick his ass. Matt took Oregon two duck. of mine. You're welcome. So, um, I did it this way because I know you guys won't take my last one. Well, here's the thing: <laughs> is I, I I I went with five because like oh maybe someone will take one of mine. So I had to quickly think of another one while while Vish went on a rampage about a duck. Hey so, man. <laughs> my so I was between two, but I'm gonna go with this one because it's more well known. I'm gonna go with Alabama. Because you try to make it fancy that your mascot's the Crimson Tide. It's a fucking elephant. Yeah, well, I mean, the, isn't Crimson Tide like the, the the beach tide, right? That's what, So how are you going to mascot that? You're, but the mascot's an elephant. What does that have to do with... Okay, At least I, I, the I, Ibis is like... I, last... I, want you to, I want you to take a step back here and think about our nickname versus our mascot before you finish Our mascot sentence. has to do with the fact that it's the last bird to take shelter before a hurricane and the first one to come out. So it relates to hurricanes. What does an elephant have to do with a beach? Uh, I, I think I think it's... it's uh, uh, Should I, you want me to name my other one? I mean, you can you can honorable mention it. There's nothing wrong with your selections. It's your selections. Well, it, it's like a, it's actually a California school. <laughs> well, don't do don't do it until we go around in case Matt, unless Matt has another California one. She's not gonna have the one I have. Oh, maybe okay. she does. Shit. No, no, no stop. Ahead. All right, stop. No, 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 no. We'll we'll come back to honorable mentions. It's your turn. Okay. Okay. So it's my turn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will go with Long Beach State's rival, the UCI Ant Eaters. Oh, I was doing a different Fucking UC. I was Terrible. I was going with a different the banana music. slugs. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck is a banana slug? <laughs> that was yeah. my fifth. What the hell yeah. is a banana slug? <laughs> no. Me and but, Matt uh, were on the same page. <laughs> well, no, because he had. Well, I didn't even know UC Irvine was was Lobby yeah, State's no, rival. Well, no, yeah, he it's, it's he not. had two. He said two that I had, and I said one that he had. UCI is like the loser UCs school that all the nerds go to, though. So whatever, <laughs> fuck them. Oh, it's fuck Actually, academics. honestly, a banana slug is probably fuck cooler academics. than an anteater. It's probably what cooler you said. Cooler than an anteater, mm. but I don't know. Yeah, who fucking picks an anteater as their mascot? That's the stupidest shit I've heard. Anyways, go ahead, Vish. I like right. how you knew it was banana slugs. <laughs> that right. Well, if I wasn't anteaters, I knew it was going to be banana slugs. <laughs> All right, I I'm going to close off here with. Um, Wait, what was your third? I forgot to write it down. What, mine? Yeah. It oh, was... Morgan. Sorry. <clears throat> I actually forgot what he said. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> you remembered. <laughs> um, 
All right, my fourth one, North Carolina. What's with the Ram? A Tar Heels. Tar Heels a person. It's a nickname for someone from North Carolina. Why? Why Ram? Hmm. And they lean into it heavy too. Like I don't even know what the name of Alabama's elephant is, but they got Ramses the Ram out there, and they like they <clears throat> name stuff. I'm like, what? What is this thing? Does Alabama, name, did Alabama name their mascot? I'm sure it has a name, but they don't. They're not really. They don't really like do much with the elephant. It's just there because you Big the Al. Mm. Yeah, see, I mean, Big Al. Why right. is why is Alabama's mascot an elephant? Let's see. While you're doing that, I'm gonna look up Ramsey's. Hmm. Story of Ramsey's. It's, it's apparently. <clears throat> Alabama Crimson's crimson clad team as the red elephant <clears throat> after during the ni- 1979 season. Hmm. Oh, it was approved by That's Coach Bear Bryant. Oh. I'm surprised no one said so, Dane Cox. So I, thought about it. I thought about it, but it's actually but kind it's of just funny. it's just a bird too. Like I mean, the mascot itself is just a bird. Um, Ramsey's was only introduced in 1987. <clears throat> they didn't have a mascot before then. They probably should have kept it that way. I like the story of the ibis. But you're talking about sucks too. There's there's quite a few. Um also, you know what's certain. a really annoying mascot? The tiger. Because like 20 million schools have that mascot. That's true. That's true. There's a lot of tigers. A lot of dog mascots, but I'm pro dog, so I didn't go that direction. Um <laughs> Yeah, I have five. I said five. Sorry. <laughs> No, we have honorable mentions. I actually had like seven because Matt took two of them. Hmm. What was your guys' high school mascots? Trojan. Panthers. We had the Barons. The what? The Barons. Barons. We were the Barons. What kind of What's... uppity stuff is that? Like bear. <laughs> <laughs> highbrow, man. Way too highbrow. I remember all of my mascots, elementary school, middle school, and high school. Um, I went from tiger to falcons to baron. Well, elementary, I went to two different elementary schools. So I went from bears to raccoons, and then red raiders, and then trojan. Wait, hold on. Is there a... I went to elementary school, then middle school, then junior high, then back to middle school because we moved and they did things differently in Miami than to high school. But I only remember the Miami. <clears throat> I think it was. I think it was the tight. God, I have no idea what it was in in Texas. Um, but it was my middle school's the Lancers. <laughs> Is there? All right, now I gotta look up oh, my. Go. I gotta go look up my other mascots. Um, Needless to say, at Pep Rallies, are always <clears throat> condoms because of our Trojan mascot. Needless to say, actually, that was that was not something I would expect. But okay, it, people um, would blow up condoms and it would get passed around like a beach ball through the through the bleachers. What the fuck? <laughs> oh my god! Exactly. It was just like needless to say, as if like that was something we expected. I was really you wondering. About? You know, I was really going to ask yeah. if the you know. That's why on the back of our basketball shirts. One year, the saying was, we don't bust under pressure. I'm still shocked that that got approved, and I'm really sad that I can't find that shirt. <clears throat> I think my mom got rid of it. Wow. But it was literally the best t-shirt. We sold a lot of basketball shirts that year. <laughs> Probably because of that. It's funny as fuck. <laughs> what were your high school colors? Later. What were your high school colors? Mine were blue and, and silver. Blue and gold. Mine were mine were like yours light, gold? Oh. mine were light blue, like uh, Carolina blue, <clears throat> and dark blue. It's two tone. Mm-hmm. Oh, I have an old high school picture of me. 
Wait, is it right here? Is it older? It's wait, this is younger than the one that used to have as your Google photo. This is my well, he was this, 19 in that photo. He was that I know, that's, why I, that's, that's why I said this is younger. This is my oh, he's gonna hate this? this, but oh, you're gonna fucking do that shit. You guys are you gonna see. You guys are gonna roast me so bad for this. Why yeah, are you so sure? You sure you want this on air or do you want to do this after? Yeah, let's do this after. <laughs> actually wow wow i don't want any trolls to see this that you know we've blocked that still yeah. you know stalk us i just found i googled and was able to determine <laughs> that that uh my elementary school mascot was a tiger how, how original it's always it's always a tiger falcon a knight right one of those yeah I think the oh god was that is the high school in College Station? I think it was also tires, so it's called everything tires. I don't know. Anyway, I moved. Thank God. Hmm. <laughs> that was that was difficult to find. Matt's college mascot was was a beach. No, when I was no. there, it was the Forty Nine ers still the Forty Nine ers when you were there. The website. For your bookstore is still called like 49ersgear.net or something was yeah. at the bottom of the email. Well, like, it costs money to change it, Vince. Does it still okay. work? <laughs> it did. I was like, man, they gotta update this. Oh no, it's still doing it. Long so Beach wait, State do you Beach. have what is what is your mascot then? For Long Beach? Or for yeah. it's just the beach now. No, no, that's the nickname. You don't have a mascot at all, like your your Oh, they have like a shark now. Okay. Like, it's like oh, at the games and stuff. It makes sense, but yeah, it's beef shark. Yeah, I mean, what else would you have? Like a dolphin so, or some shit? No, no, it makes sense. It makes sense. It works. I was, I was asking, like, well, there must be some kind. I think there's some dude just throwing sand at people. There's what probably if, like an actual mascot. What if, mascot. what if your mascot was like a beach ball? <laughs> some dude just up as a beach ball. A 15 year old beach ball that has the same air in it or whatever. Syracuse However, already tried tried is. dressing someone up as a beach ball. Hmm. 15 year old air. Wait, almost is it actually 16. 15? I was I was right. I was close. Uh, I just guessed a random amount of time. It's almost 16. It's almost 16. It'll be 16 in May. There we go. We didn't get beach balls at my grad school one. That's not cool. We didn't get beach balls at mine at all, I don't think. I don't know when These like sure. fell on us after like we graduated. Like they dropped them. I we didn't have any of that. So I took one. I don't know where any of my graduation stuff is. I guess it's sitting in Miami somewhere. I still have my <laughs> my programs from both of them. My stuff's either in Miami or it's gone. I don't know. I don't have it here. That's for sure. Go beach. Go beach. Go beach. Um, anything left to say well, before I mean, we move to final thoughts? Now I think we've about covered it. So I guess next show will be next next Wednesday, right? <laughs> next Wednesday, yes. All right, so let's do the wrap up before we uh, do final. So show next Wednesday, unless there's like a big news, either like you know transfer wise or coaching wise. Um, then Maybe a midnight to... buckets on Saturday. We'll do an we'll do an emergency show if there's news. I mean, if nothing changes between now and okay Saturday, probably not. But if something. Maybe Saturday, probably next Wednesday, unless something big happens in the next few days. Uh, Six Rings Canes, Monday, 8.30. Um, Canes on deck probably next Tuesday. F1 next Tuesday as well. So a lot of stuff going on. Stay tuned. Subscribe to the podcast on Five Reasons Canes. If you search for that at wherever you get your podcast, you'll see it. You'll get all these episodes. Follow up us at Seconds. Seconds. Yeah. Canes. Yeah, follow follow all, of our, all of our Twitter accounts. They're on the, screen. See on the screen. Yep. yep. And for our newest segment, we will now move into Matt's final thoughts. What the fuck? I was not expecting that. Do I ever not answer well, the call I, when you guys make it? That, I wow. was so hoping. I wasn't going to ask, but I was in my back of my head. I was like, I wonder if she made a graphic. I was about to get into it. I was going to say. I can I see was, your mouth opening because I can see you backstage in the video. So I was like, Matt was like mid settled. <laughs> Wait, we have to cue it again so Matt can actually start talking right after it. So wait. 
All right, right. Go ahead. Okay. You can mute yourself, Melissa, if you can't control yourself. But anyway, I, I learned not to do that. Then I get accused. All right, here we go. Well, guys, I got to tell you guys, I'm a little pissed off because of things I see on Twitter. The disrespect the ACC gets on a constant basis when it comes to basketball with the NCAA tournament and everything. It's it's just I don't know where it started. It's been the past few years. It's just utter bullshit. Four of the 16 teams this year are from the ACC. We all know this Duke, NC State, UNC uh, and Clemson, unfortunately, um, all still in the field. The ACC has the high, the, the best record in the tournament this year. Um, most wins at least, but also you see guys like John Rothstein. I love John, man, but there was a moment this during the season. He he thought only two teams would make it, which is just ridiculous. The ACC had the best non-conference schedule against, um, top opponents, top 25 ranked opponents out of any major conference this season. There were nine and 12 big 10, nine and 13. Uh, Big East, 7-11, Pac-12, 6-11, gets worse from there. ACC was on top of the board. Since 2015, the conference with the most titles, Final Fours, Elite Eight, and Sweet Sixteens is the ACC. It's us. But again, you see guys in the media, Seth Davis, John Rothstein, saying the ACC is top-heavy. It's only Duke and UNC. Well, guess what? The ACC has the most... Different teams to reach the Sweet 16 in the past five tournaments. Nine different teams. Next up after that is the Big 12 with seven, and it goes down from there. Like I said, ACC has been eight and one. We can talk about that one loss. Of course, you know, Virginia laid a huge egg, but skewed, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, fuck your skewed analytics, manipulated data. ACC has the most tournament wins this year so far. Uh, and the, and the most in the past three years, uh, put some damn respect on our name. I'm tired of seeing this shit. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. Cue the soft outro. Don't cry. Keep it chill. Wear good socks.